Joellen Felmuth, Elaine Fitzgerald, Vaughn Freeman, Here. Ari Glassman, Here. Bob Kiesler, Here. Ina Lee, Present. Kara Lundgren, Meredith McCleary, yeah. Marie McKenzie, Melissa Milroy, I saw Melissa, no? Jenny Morejon, hi, here. David Muir, James Pancallo, here. Tom Park, here. Tim Petrillo, here. Bobby Rodriguez, here. Christina Schwartzman Sovereign. Raylan Story, Matt McNeil. I'm here on phone. Excellent. Is there anybody else on the phone? Okay. Okay, we're good. All right, thank you. So uh, before we start the meeting, I just want a couple of comments. First off, uh, I got to say it, it's a, it's a great time to be in tourism down here in South Florida. Okay, I want I want to recognize that. Our destination is really, really booming, thankfully. Uh, we had a wonderful Tortuga. I don't know how many people made it out Tortuga, but it was an incredible show. It was incredible weather. I don't think we could have asked for a better sunset on Sunday. I mean, the amount of social media posts from that Tortuga Festival was, was incredible. So, so now we have Pride this weekend. Then we have the, what's Riptide called again now? Odyssey. Odyssey. We have Odyssey following that. So. And, and the boat parade. So f December is going to be a legendary destination for a, a legendary month for our destination. So um, I'm really happy about that, considering what we've come through. So uh, everyone here deserves credit, and, and uh, we're just very, very fortunate. So, so having said that, let's let's uh, jump into the marketing. Uh, All right. Well, good morning. For those of you I have not met personally, I'm Kamala Clark, the new SVP of Marketing and Communications for Visit Lauderdale. I've been in this role for now about 100 working days, um, and I have the pleasure of working with an amazing team, and I want to just publicly thank them for the warm welcome and from you all. Um, it's been pretty impressive. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. My focus for the last few months has been really to foster an environment of trust and collaboration among the industry and my colleagues. We continue to grow our dynamic team with re recruiting of two roles. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Vaughn, turn off your mic. You wanna? <laughs> the disruptor, yes. Um, our focus has really been on recruiting two key roles. We're going to be hiring um, a Greater Fort Lauderdale um, marketing manager who will work hand in hand with our agency on um, really promoting and telling the story of our destination. We're also going to be hiring a digital manager who will be responsible for shepherding the redevelopment of our website. So from, as many of you know, we're going to be redoing our website and we're bringing on some people to handle that as well. Um, they're also, she's also going to, this individual will also be responsible for um, our social media. And while I've spent the last few months rebuilding the marketing communications team, um, I've really wanted to really develop relationships with you all. So I want to open up an invitation to come and visit your properties, to meet with you all individually, um, and to really get to know you and figure out how we can best promote this community. Under Stacy's leadership, I will say um, that we've had the support to really make some huge um, wind trails over the last couple of months. Um, I would say the debut of our convention center was pretty impressive. We opened up our doors to the, um, the boat show and it was wonderful. We partnered with NBC and Towns and Bell for a satellite uh, media tour and a 60 minute program that aired on NBC twice on uh, no October 31st and on November the 3rd. Now this was my first boat show so I was thoroughly impressed but don't take it from me. Take a look at the video. Townsend, that looks like a great addition to any boat that somebody no, might pick up off. here at the show. And if you're planning on coming to the 2022 edition of the show, there is a brand new hotel offering here in Fort Lauderdale. The Four Seasons is coming online early next year. Let me show you how sweet it's gonna be. 
The hotel will feature 189 rooms with fabulous ocean views of the Atlantic. On the third floor, there's a pool deck with two pools and a restaurant. And of course, the legendary Four Seasons service. You know, guys, this really is a great addition to the already impressive lineup of destinations to stay when you come to the greater Fort Lauderdale area, which, by the way, boasts more than 550 hotels, five new ones coming online next year in 2022, including, of course, this, the Four Seasons. Welcome back to the 62nd Annual Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Now, there are so many spectacular views to take in and no better place than 25 stories up here at the Sparrow Rooftop, the tallest rooftop bar in the greater Fort Lauderdale area located inside of the Dalmar Hotel. Now, when you look at this patio, it is eclectic, it's colorful, it's alive, it has so much to offer. The Sparrow Bar features a Florida-inspired cocktail menu imagined by the cocktail institution Death & Co, made for us by Sparrow mixologist Peter. Each drink is carefully crafted based on the delicious dishes offered here. In between the tropical flavor and energy, it is really hard to top this. Chef Marchand has prepared us this incredible sample of what the menu looks like. Not only tempura, shrimp, and prawns, edamame, duck bao bun, this is beautiful, Chef. Thank you so much. The vibrant Asian fusion menu here just complements a view that you can only get in Fort Lauderdale. Speaking of, I think I can see Townsend down there. Townsend, what are you getting into now? Well, guys, there's no way I could come to Fort Lauderdale without hitting a party. And this is the kickoff party for the show here at Super Yacht Village. Inside, there's celebrities, there's billionaires and VIPs. Let's go chat them up. Stacey Ritter, President and CEO of Visit Lauderdale. And Stacey, why is the boat show so important to the city and county here in Fort Lauderdale? Well, Fort Lauderdale is the yachting capital of the world and Fort Lauderdale is in Broward County. And so the ability to showcase the beautiful waterways, the canals, the wonderful yachts that we have here to not only the people who live in this country, but the world, it is unparalleled. And the excitement is contagious this year. There are lots and lots of people here enjoying the beauty of not only the waterways, but the weather has been perfect. There's no better place to be than Fort Lauderdale this week. You gotta visit Fort Lauderdale because it is popping here tonight at Super Yacht Village, but there is so much more coming up back on the docks. That was a true reflection of the energy that went through the city for the boat show. And I think as we have shows coming up, that, that's the type of energy that we're expecting to move forward. Um, this year's boat show, we compared the six metrics um, from Wednesday let me just go here. From Wednesday to the same day of the week during 2019 boat show. You know, we didn't do anything in uh, 2020, so all of our comparisons are from 2019. Uh, on this slide, the dark blue is the county metrics. The lighter blue is the sub market that compares downtown Fort Lauderdale and the Fort, La Fort Lauderdale beaches, which goes from approximately Oakland Park to the 17th Street areas. The market as a whole gained share on four out of five nights. Thursday posted the largest gain, 14% increase, as compared to 2019. Wednesday was the second largest gain, 10% increase. Sunday was a loss at 7% compared to 2019. Looking at the Fort Lauderdale submarket, Thursday demand was 21% higher than the same time in 2019. But Sunday demand did slip. It was down 19% lower. The northern subset, which includes Lauderdale-by-the-Sea, Pompano, Deerfield, Coral Springs, basically the northern quadrant of our county, posted an increase for all five nights and was the only submarket with a demand increase on Sunday. Because supply outpaced demand, occupancy levels were down four out of the five nights countywide. The only night occupancy exceeded 2019 was Thursday night. Countywide ADR was up four out of the five nights. Sunday was a loss of 
$5.87. That's 4% on ADR. Looking at the downtown and beach sublet, ADR was up all five nights with Thursday marking the largest increase. The Northern Quadrant had the highest ADR gain for all four markets on Friday night at 16% gain, Saturday at 18% gain, and Sunday at 9% gain. I'd say, again, the boat show was a success for all. Um, We're also simultaneously developing the much anticipated partner program. We've talked about this co-op partnership program. Um, Our team has been working with our legal departments to get everything through. Um, But we plan on offering a seasonal package with varying investment um, opportunities. Uh, We'll be focusing on leisure and meeting markets. Um, We'll be inviting industry partners to attend events and trade shows. And registration will be managed through our online portal. Our goal is really to enhance our partner engagement, increase more synergy with our hotel partners, and to generate revenue sources that magnify our existing marketing efforts. We also took a look at our travel guide. We've been busy and partnered with our local publisher, Island Syndicates, to produce an inside look at Greater Fort Lauderdale. With the new Explore magazine, 10 magazines that provide an in-depth coverage of all 31 municipalities. The publication will will be featured on visitlauderdale.com. It will also be distributed at local municipalities and receptive hotels, and will also be uh, featured throughout um, high-end and aspirational destinations throughout Miami-Dade and Palm Beach. But wait, there's more. You may recall that in our previous meeting, we introduced you to our luxury campaign. The campaign targeted high-end and aspirational travelers, slightly different from our traditional market. And as we tested the market, we found the approach to be well received and we generated really positive feedback. Um, The total campaign impressions were at about 20.3 million. Video completes, which which were our video ads, um, reached 1.5 million. And the clicks were at 60,000. And it really hit the target markets that we were looking at, which were New York, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, our area, Boston, Atlanta, Orlando, Houston, Chicago, San Francisco, Tampa, St. Pete, and Los Angeles. So all in all, the campaign was a huge success, and we're going to continue to utilize those assets as we more clearly define and claim um, our brand, which is everyone under the sun. We're currently developing a campaign that breaks through today's communications environment through today's, um, through bold and unescapable storytelling, imagery, and targeting. We want to assure that the investment is, is gets its return through appropriate research and continuous measurements. The heart of the campaign will be new television, print, online advertising designed to disrupt today's media clutter and unexpected um, interruptions. All of the new production will be of the highest standards, reflect the new revitalize brand and put our destination in the best light. Every effort will be made to ensure that our community is reflected and represented effectively through production values reflecting an image consistent with being one of America's top travel destinations. We've tapped some of the production industry's strongest talent using the highest production standards to combine specialty animation and character development to bring new, exciting images to life. Images that will reinforce the brand's position and be solely and uniquely associated with our destination. And if that's not enough, we're also positioning Greater Fort Lauderdale as an alternate destination for F1 teams and fans as they plan to attend the F1 in Miami this spring. There will be more to come on that later in the season. So as you can see, the world is opening back up and we are eager to welcome many of our visitors. We have more than a dozen events that are on the books as as Tim mentioned, and we are working with each of those organizations to help tell our story and ensure that each of you are represented appropriately. And just to close out, I know we typically go through numbers, so I didn't want to leave that part out because I know you look forward to it. 
Um, I want to give you our numbers for January through November um, as compared to 2019. Occupancy is hovering at about 70%, which is down 8%. But that's a direct correlation to our supply outpacing our demand. ADR for the year is down 64 cents over the same time in 2019. Reported hotel revenue is up 1%. Our supply, meaning the number of hotels in the market, is up 10% over the same year in 2019. And in 2021, we've welcomed nine new properties for an additional 1,141 rooms to market with another two properties scheduled to open by year end. Revpar is down 9%. Demand, meaning the number of rooms sold, is up nearly 2%, which given everything going on is still a positive story. That 2% represents a little more than 110,000 rooms sold during the same time in 2019. So that's the end of the formal presentation and I open it up for questions. So, so I'll, 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 can you hear me? Okay, I'll open it up for questions. I have some, I have some questions though first. Sure. So being the chair, I'll ask first. Um, first off, uh, you know, that, that piece that NBC did for the boat show, I mean, mm -hmm. it was incredible. It showcased our destination, how beautiful it is. It's, I think it was, it was very, very well done. Interesting on, on those last comps that you uh, highlighted, if we think about it, we take out the first quarter, okay, of Q1 versus 2019, which was very solid compared to Q1 of 2020, uh, of, th of this year, we were still down and we were still, we were still battling COVID, sure. you know, from COVID restrictions from other communities, from other, from, from other destinations. So the ramp up that we have seen, it'd be interesting to take out the, the last six months and compare, because I think we'd be way up. I think we got mm -hmm. hurt from the, from the first quarter. So, uh, and, and uh, my, my other comment was this luxury campaign that we rolled out, I think is fantastic. I've been a huge, huge proponent of it. I have had more people reach out to me from other destinations who work in tourism, who are real estate developers, commenting on how great that campaign is. So I, I think that uh, I'm happy to hear that we're going to further develop that because I think it, it really resonates with a lot of uh, other destinations that we're competing with. So, any other comments and questions? Ina? Um, comments and questions. Um, first of all, really extraordinary work on behalf of staff, which I know has been uh, limited. And um, as you're rebuilding your staff, and also the social media you've been doing compared to what it used to be is extraordinary. And I, again, love the luxury campaign. I, and I guess this question is more for the hoteliers in the room because it's what I'm hearing, right? Is that the larger hotels that rely on meetings and conventions, you had a lot of cancellations during the Delta variant, and a lot of those have rebooked into 22, 23, but I think that's something we wanna take a look at as an overall question for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, secondarily, the other question I have is with, um, um, well, that's my main question right now and how that's looking, and what you're all seeing right now with the international markets opening up. So are you seeing people coming in, booking, interest? What are you seeing in that sector? Because that also um, impacts us. And I just came out of a Chambers Council of Economic Advisors meeting that um, reports to the feds. And so Danelle actually reported from Harbor Beach on, on that. But um, the other thing that I'm hearing that's impacting the hotels right now and also restaurants is supply chain issues, getting open, and cost. So not that that's impacting marketing necessarily, but um, if you're delayed on getting something open. And then I guess my fourth question, or whatever question it is, is with the Western part of the convention center now opening, how are the bookings looking? So for, I'm gonna defer to Ed on the bookings, if you could come up and give us that update. Good morning, everybody. Uh, there were several questions there. I'll try to address them all. Uh, the most recent one, bookings at the convention center, excellent. We've got a uh, great pace coming up. Uh, you heard what's going on in January. We are, I mean, in December with the events and stuff. We have a few sporting events also using the building in December to kick us off. There is some work. This is somewhat um, uh, unforeseen. We are still doing some work on the roof, which is uh, limiting our access to our third floor ballrooms right now in the West. So we've had to move some groups down into the exhibit hall. Thus far, it hasn't caused a problem with the groups currently in the building, but it has 
forced us to pull back a little bit on some new groups we could have brought into the building. Um, but we're pacing well. We are going to have a strong December, strong January. In January, we get our first trade association in, in town, um, a really long, complicated uh, medical name that starts with an S. Forgive me, I don't have it with me right now. But they, uh, they're our first um, trade association coming in for a big citywide in January. And then um, it's staying pretty busy there beyond with the peak being May. May is going to be unbelievable between the National Senior Games in the building, International CBD Expo in the building, and several other uh, national trade associations in the building. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be insane. It's going to be a lot of fun downtown. Um, question, another one of your questions, Ina, I believe, was about cancellations. Certainly the hoteliers in the room may be able to speak to that better, but what we are seeing as a market and with our involvement, um, there are still some cancellations. They seem to have slowed down. The Delta variant has seemed to run its course, um, and we're starting to see people um, uh, keep their meetings. I was at a meeting down at the Diplomat last night for the Focus Right conference, a conference of uh, the tech industry inside the hospitality industry. Um, their numbers were down about 50%, um, so there were about seven, 800 people there as opposed to the 14 to 1,600. Uh, but most meetings are continuing to happen. And for the ones that we see inside the hotels, um, that with corporations beyond them, the pickup is good. Um, but they were, they were smaller blocks to start with. Um, but there is still some rebooking. And yes, we are capturing those that do cancel, at least from our office, we are capturing them into 22. We're running out of space, quite frankly, to put them in 22. It's a good problem for our hotels. We should be able to maintain some rate and rates and occupancy as, as we go forward as a result. Um, what other questions were there on it? Um, I don't believe, and I'd be curious to hear from the hotels, we've heard a lot of um, uh, excitement about international being open. I've been to a couple conferences where uh, through USTA's help we've gotten waivers and got international people here, so they are coming to America. I don't have any immediate data, and I don't know if Kamala does or uh, if Tracy on our team does, any immediate data for here in the marketplace. But the buzz both here and when we were on the road last week around the country is um, that the international tr demand is, is off to a very quick start. So, okay. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? I, I can comment on behalf of Harbor Beach. Um, so as far as groups are concerned, um, we the cancellations have pretty much stopped. Um, I haven't had any in the last couple of weeks, a couple of small ones, but not, nothing, not a big deal. Uh, the fourth quarter was, you know, pretty much decimated with cancellations. We had one really great cancellation because it fell right over Tortuga. So yeah. <laughs> it was a it was a nursing association at a very low rate. They canceled and we backfilled it with, you know, three times the rate. So it all worked out very nicely. Um, however, uh, like this week, uh, we've got two groups in house Monday through, uh, they check out Friday, uh, filling us up. Uh, so we're not completely full, but you know, last night we ran in a 90% range, uh, which is good. So, and they're both, uh, one's a corporate group, uh, it's Pepsi and the other one is a, uh, an association. You'll see it, association was on the books and they basically cut back. And they gave us back our Caribbean ballroom, and we were able to sell it to Pepsi, which is a you know a corporate group. So they 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 kind of squeezed that meeting in. It was booked about a month ago. Um, so we're seeing that demand. We've got uh, okay. So next week is Thanksgiving, and then we move into December. Uh, we've had an annual group that's been coming to the hotel since it's opened. Um, their numbers are down. They're going to go uh, hybrid, uh, but they're still having the meeting, which is encouraging. Then we fall into Christmas. Christmas is going to be a, probably a sellout. We're pacing very well, uh, as as we always do. And then the first two weeks in January are kind of slow. We've had a number of groups moved out. Uh, they those groups uh, moved out uh, about uh, two months ago in anticipation. No one, you know, in the height of the Delta uh, variant, no one knew where we were going to be at this point. If if they were to, able to make that decision now, they probably would have stayed. Uh, but then it seemed like the right thing to do, and um, they moved. So our first quarter group is down considerably, but our leisure is up. Uh, the rest of the year is pacing to 19. Uh, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four are all up pacing to 2019 uh, positive. But Q1 is definitely down, uh, and we don't know if that's okay or not. If, it, if the demand uh, continues and as strong as it was last year, 
It's a great thing um, because we'll we'll run a stronger ADR, but we won't have the catering revenue that we're used to used to getting. As far as overall for the year, it's about uh, as far as mix of business, mostly a, a lot of association higher than what we typically have, and that's all because corporations were not booking, and so they held back on booking either that or they had already lifted and shifted to another year, or. Uh, they're outside of their booking cycle, which means uh, they would have booked at our hotel, but they're already committed because they had to lift and shift their meeting in that city that they were at the year before. So our booking cycles are all messed up, and I think they will be for the next several years just because of the way uh, groups book. A lot of corporate groups had to book three years in advance, which they never do because they didn't want to get tagged for a cancellation charge, uh, and that's happening throughout um, the industry. So I guess that's a summary about everything you asked. Yeah. Actually, international? Uh, international. Uh, we're seeing more uh, Canadians coming in uh, from a European uh, at IMAX last, last week. They were all excited. There was a lot of uh, exhibitors, hotels, hoteliers from uh, in the international sector there. Uh, however, that's going to be slow to ramp up. Um, we're not seeing a huge demand yet from the international segment, but we are seeing Canadians. I, I understand they were lined up at the border on November 8th, waiting to come in and caravans. Yeah. And so, um, but we've, I've got a Canadian group I just uh, presented to yesterday coming in 2023. So that, that's exciting. That's great. Do, does anybody have any comments for that? Thank you for that update. Cause, because what I want to say is, does anybody have any questions or comments for Camilla? And if not, we can go into some extensive uh, what's going on in each of our properties in a, a, a member update. That would be okay. Go ahead. No worries. Yep. Okay. So I have to turn around. Sorry. Um, well, with and Ed had mentioned, you know, group sales and conventions coming back. Is there a marketing plan for those that are coming here on conventions? Mm -hmm to have them then extend their stay through leisure. And I ask because so many things have been pushed into, you know, the first and second quarter mm -hmm. of 2022. The, the events are sure. are crazy. It's kind of a captive audience. Mm -hmm. Maybe folks that are here on their conventions might like to have the family come in, sure. you know, for the weekend. Uh, Rita Wells used to put out a little like one sheet that had all the different restaurants mm -hmm. and, and attractions and things to do that went there but could it go beyond that sure you know like, here's all the events that you could be you know that are during your time that actually came up in the um, tdc meeting last week as well so we are working um, on an internal process to make sure that we get that information out to not only the hotels but also some of the um concierge within the uh, the apartment or condo complexes so we are looking to do that we're trying to figure out the most effective way to communicate that out to the market um, in addition to just sending it out um, in an email but I think mine is more is yeah. it go, like I'm coming here on a convention from my company mm -hmm. I would like to know oh wow Odyssey is here I'm gonna fly my husband down because mm -hmm. right. everybody else is leaving on Thursday and we're gonna stay like how are we keeping those people here longer yeah, good question. We, um, uh, a short while back, once in anticipation of the convention center opening, we rebuilt our convention services team um, under the leadership of a woman named Toby Hollenbeck. And part of, you're 100% right, part of the strategy to drive extra stays is done through the buyer of the group, through the meeting planner. So we, we've always had strategies to help build their attendance, particularly in the trade association world. Everyone wins. That's a revenue generator for us. Uh, for them, they would love to have as many people come as possible and stay as long as they do. So we do have strategies. What you referenced from Rita um, is one such item that we do provide the groups with as we ahead of time. Keep in mind that um, the group books like five years out, and then we actually address this issue, issue about one year out. Um, additionally, we are investing in some new technology um, that'll bring back the old, uh, I hope I'm not spilling any secrets, bring back the old meeting badge program and things to do program electronically and delivered on people's phones. So I won't, it, we still have a way to go in procurement on that, but that is in the cards for the upcoming year, which will further enhance that opportunity for us. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. 
know which, okay, piggybacking on uh, the conventions, what a impact, if any, um, with the opening up of the cruise industry with pre and post days, um, what kind of outreach, yeah. et cetera? This is Ed's world. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's, we've been asking about that, trying for that for years. Um, the challenge, the, the reality is it makes for an awful long stay if you're going on a cruise after you've been down here three or four nights for a convention. Doesn't mean we don't try and we are still doing that and we do team up with our, our colleagues on our leisure department as we get to the agents there to try to do some of that. We have actually offered in the past um, meat and cruise packages. Uh, they were kind of customized individually. They weren't overly well received, but it is something um, that we continue to explore, but I don't believe we found the magic strategy, strategy um, to generate a lot of that. Well, not necessarily with the uh, convention, but with partnering with cruise lines as far as pre and post days. Oh, yeah, you, absolutely. It, so when you take the conventions out of the pictures, absolutely. <coughs> Tracy and her team in our, our leisure department um, has several strategies, have been in contact with all the major cruise lines in and out of Fort Lauderdale, um, and we've trained their, the cruise line agents to help sell the hotel room packages pre and post and try to arm them with the information of what's going on in the market as well. So, yeah, we, we, have, keep, we have strategies for that. Do we keep any stats on the impact of that um, from the have, hotelers? I'd have to look for that. It, that, that would take, um, I don't believe we have anything simple in that. Um, there are ways, of course, to extrapolate certain dates and star reports and that kind of stuff, and we, we could look into that, but I don't believe yeah, we have any Yeah, that's hard to really track time. who's here on pre-cruise unless you stand by the elevators and look for the people that they Yeah, it, it is a very difficult metric they, to get to. You really don't know why they're here sometimes, uh, but you Yeah, can, no, you that know. wasn't the question. Yeah. The question was on packages that you may offer. Yeah, no, but we don't have any okay. numbers to talk about with that, now. Yeah, we don't have, um, well, not every hotel would have a, a pre- or post-cruise package. Mm -hmm. That they usually buy your individual uh, overnight rooms, in, which are usually at retail. Um, but yeah, going through the travel agencies is the best way to yep. um, try to attract that business. I know we've got an expert here from the cruise lines, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Um, so I only represent the Carnival Corporation group of brands, which is Princess Holland and Seaborn that would possibly be out of uh, Fort Lauderdale and the Carnival Cruise Line brand, of course. Um, but we have met and we have said, yes, there is work to do there in terms of collaboration. And I think that's one of the reasons I was considered for this uh, committee. So we will work through that. Um, I don't know, b based on where I sit, I don't know the history of what's been done yet, but I have heard loud and clear from Stacy and the team that there's work to be done there. So. I'm committed to um, partnering and seeing how I can connect them with the right people in our company to make some things happen. Thank you. Any other comments before we get into industry update? Okay, actually, uh, before we get into industry update, I'd like to get an approval of the uh, minutes from last meeting. So moved. A second? All in favor? All right. All right. Approved. Okay, so as far as our industry update, I can, I can speak for the restaurants. Um, Obviously, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's come back strong. We're very happy with where we are uh, in comparison to 2019. We're, we're overall, we're up. Our a la carte business is, is significantly up. I would say our event business and corporate holiday parties have come back in the last month. I was very concerned in August, September, as there was the pace of bookings was way off. But now uh, it has come back very strong and we did have some cancellations for COVID, but we were able to backfill those at a higher higher rate, which which, which is great. So th that, that's what we're seeing. Uh, obviously this, these events and things like that add such compression and people into the market that, uh, you know, we're, we're certainly feeling that. Um, what Ina talked about with supply chain issues, it's a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. We have, uh, every day is a battle. You order things, you tell it's going to be delivered, and they say, oh, no, we can't get that till six months. So, so you know, every day we're, we're changing specs on our, our, our silverware, china glassware, all that kind of stuff. So that, that has been a challenge, and I think that will continue to be a challenge. 60 Minutes ran a whole segment on it over the, on Sunday about the supply chain issues, and that's a very, very real thing. So labor still continues to be 
an issue, although we have seen some uh, improvement in that regard. Uh, we are seeing some more applicants come through, uh, but it's still not where it needs to be. Uh, I, I think people just have left the industry and now we're getting, we are, we are, we are seeing a lot less experienced people come through the doors, so we have to increase our training and whatnot. So that's pretty much where we see it from the restaurant perspective. Right um, I'll wait till the end, but you know, pretty much, I'm. Um, what I hear from everybody is what you're going to talk about anyway. So, um, um, and regarding travel hosts, I guess I talk about that occasionally. Um, um, this, uh, the demand for our product has never been higher. Um, particularly, a lot of the properties have not gone back to their full concierge department. So, people, you know, our the physical magazine has been really very much in demand. Just keep trying to keep it supplied, which is great. On the other hand, which is very interesting, from a printing perspective, just cost-wise, 30% of all the major printers in the United States went out of business during COVID, which has now put all that business into the remaining 70% and just take a look at the amount of packaging that Amazon has used. So the cost of printing, the chip situation, all of that stuff, and also cost of IT, which is dramatically expanded, um, is putting a pressure on our my what I my costs are shipping like all of those kind of hard costs but the good news is the market is full they want travel host they want us you know all of our digital stuff we're doing so that's been really great okay hello I'm Vaughn Freeman from Odyssey the Odyssey Beach Festival is coming up in a couple weeks the first weekend I the first weekend in December uh, tickets were really robust uh, ticket sales were really robust until with the Astral World tragedy, and that kind of slowed things down a little bit. We're hoping to have a comeback. And for those of you who don't know what Odyssey means, Odyssey used to be Intercom Media and formerly CBS Media. It's an app. It's an audio app you can get on your mobile. 244 terrestrial radio stations you can listen to, any station across the world. It has audio streaming. We're a podcast company. We're the second largest podcast creator and second largest podcast listening uh, audio app. So when they saw Riptide uh, over the four years, uh, when they consolidated, they targeted Riptide and Fort Lauderdale Beach as the place that they wanted to name uh, their, their major event for the entire company. So we're promoting this to 200 million listeners, and we have been since July. So we anticipate well over 50 million, probably a lot more than that, media impressions nationwide. And that's not even counting the social and the digital and influencers. Some of our personalities that talk about this festival are on TikTok. They have like 7 million followers. So every time they talk about Fort Lauderdale Beach, I think that really contributes to people thinking, even if they don't go to our event, they're thinking Fort Lauderdale Beach is the place to be. And the way our talent describes it, turquoise water, white sandy beaches, warm when everybody else is, no, you know, when the rest of the country is getting cold, we're just perfect down here. So, um we're excited about December 4th and 5th, and uh, if anybody needs any information, come see me, and we'll talk to you personally about it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Jenny with the Fort Lauderdale Downtown Development Authority again. Um, we've been really tracking kind of return to work trends. While that may not generate, you know, visit trips, it's a good indicator of how um, employees may travel into the future. And we're at about the same numbers we were when we tracked this during the summer, um, early on in June compared to October. On average, Class A office buildings in downtown are seeing about 50% employee occupancy. Um, and that ranges really from companies who have called back employees or obviously higher up in around 75-80%, but those where it's completely a flexible opportunity, they're down as low as 30%. Um, we do anticipate that that's only going to rise after the holidays. Um, just like, you know, the hotel rooms, there's, there's strong indicators. The good news is benchmarking around um, national comparisons were about 10 to 15% higher than other downtown destinations for Class A occupancy. So um, that combined with, you know, our 40% increase in downtown population, there's just a huge purchasing power, which is helping the restaurant industry despite the challenges, you know, you all have. Um, and from a leasing standpoint, we were seeing on average velocity of move-ins um, for units at almost 250 a month. So, you know, right now our population in downtown is about 45% ages 25 to 44. 
as you may know, some of these apartments are fairly small, which means when friends and family come to visit, they're staying in hotels. Um, that's good news. And, um, you know, with about 900 rooms being delivered in the past five years in downtown, we have about a thousand on the books to, that are either approved or in some kind of review process that could be built over the next five, maybe 10 years, depending on timing. Um, another 600,000 square feet of restaurant and retail space. So again, you know, seeing this CBS News um, sportscast, you know, showing those images of downtown, it's a compliment to the beach. The beach is a compliment to downtown. And it all really starts to create this very sophisticated metropolitan experience that I think visitors, um, whether travel or leisure, uh, business or leisure, are looking for. Um, at the DDA, we've been continuing with our partners, our marketing a PR firm, Levy, who's helped us really try to stay in the national narrative um, when it comes to investment in South Florida. We were recently in Bloomberg for a Vision 2030 rendering that we've provided that shows the skyline of the future for downtown. And I'll be sending each of you posters. They're pretty fun. May not hit many of the beach properties, but it really shows downtown's evolution. Um, we're working on a video. We're partnering with several of our you know, the boat show, um, the Inner Miami, Panthers, um, others to really show how the experience down here. And also we are negotiating with a world-class design firm to completely reimagine Heisinga Park uh, right on the river. We believe that having those signature public spaces are going to be key for the travelers that come pre-post cruises, that come for, um, you know, conventions or just the growing population and employees that are downtown to have these great outdoor spaces. So over the next couple of years, you'll see Heisinga Park completely transform, much like the beach has, and be those complements kind of on each end of Las Olas. So very excited about that. That's great. Um, went out um, which we're really excited about uh, as it relates to sailing out of Fort Lauderdale which is a princess and Holland America brand um, they're pretty excited to be restarting I can share that the biggest challenge that we have really is the destination requirements so you know the ships have to go somewhere and uh, for those that don't know my primary role is negotiating with about 27 countries in the region um, the requirements for re-entry into these destinations. And many of them, for example, will not accept an antigen test um, as, a, as an indicator to, to board a ship. Whereas with the CDC, we're aligned to accept both PCR and antigen testing for vaccinated guests at least. So it's something that we work through and sometimes that puts our itineraries at risk. Um, you know, when you, many a, a lot of the islands believe that these tests are readily available throughout the entire U.S., but they're not within a two-day time frame, which is required by the CDC in order to board. So that's why we open to both PCR and antigen testing. However, we're sailing. Um, we have some new ships coming out. Um, I was on one recently, and honestly, it just, it just felt great. People are not complaining about adhering to the requirements on board and the protocols. It's just the new world that we're living in and they're just happy to be out. So we're happy to be back. Um, by June of next year, we expect to have over 95 ships, at least 72 ships globally, back in service. I will say just quickly, and I know this doesn't pertain to us, but we're talking about international markets. Um, my German and Italian brands are challenged today because cases are rising significantly in Germany. So those programs are challenged to restart, and typically for us, those lines they cross to the Caribbean. They do a cross Atlantic to come to where it's nice and warm, this part of the world. Um, but we're not sure what's mm -hmm. going to happen because of rising cases in those markets. So well, I'm not sure what that means for the hotels and um, here in Fort Lauderdale. That's well, it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, Bobby Rodriguez. Um, in my industry, in music, entertainment, special events, festivals, pretty much the last 19 months has been shut down. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is that moving forward, uh, things are looking very bright. Uh, I speak to CEOs uh, monthly uh, throughout the United States of different events and festivals. And right now, uh, events are having rec record-breaking uh, numbers. Uh, people are really clamoring to get out. 
that being said, um, I am full steam ahead with the Florida Renaissance Festival, which will open in February, February 5th. And we are anticipating probably 150,000 attendees this year. Um, and because it is our 30th anniversary, uh, we are going to pull out all the stops. And uh, we're actually hiring a number of international acts that we're going to be bringing into the show. So we're um, very excited about the future. It's looking very bright. You forgot to plug that you're playing for me. I said, and you forgot to plug you're playing for me. <laughs> um, Ari Glassman, I, I'm just going to speak on behalf of the city of Fort Lauderdale's Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, I was retained in February to oversee the four parks and the new build on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Uh, the Suntex Marina has taken over the Las Olas Marina operations. The Construction of the new $50 million public-private partnership marina is underway and is expected in about two years to complete. Um, it really rounds out the $78 million that's already been invested in the parks on Fort Lauderdale Beach. So when we talk about elevating the destination, you know, it, we're adding in a lot. Uh, construction on D.C. Alexander Park is already underway. That is set to complete. That is across the street from the Swimming Hall of Fame if you're not familiar, and uh, that's set to complete winter 2022. For us, um, as Bobby said, there is just a huge demand for people getting out and enjoying events. I think from the flip side of like the luxury side of things, we're really looking to show everyone under the sun um, every experience that they can have here, whether they're a millennial or a millionaire or have young families or active seniors, we want everyone to come together and just, it kind of, might sound kind of corny, but you know, we're holding it up as just a good old fashioned good time, you know, where everyone can mix and mingle and make friends. And what we're seeing from that and what we keep hearing back both through social and email as well, um, they are making memories and they're great memories and reasons for, for folks to come back. So our website is, I don't know that I mentioned it the last time, is The Loop, L-O-O-P-F-L-B. Uh, starting, adding into all of these other events, all these big major, major events uh, that are coming up over the next coming few weeks and into the new year. Uh, Light Up the Beach is on Tuesday, uh, and then we kick off a six-week series called Wonderland, uh, where for four days every weekend we are extending the hours and activities over at Las Olas Oceanside Park, uh, both with local performers, some, some wonderful, we've got the Bobby Rodriguez Orchestra coming out, so we're tying in with a lot of the different festivals and events that are here with a, a big thing over Winterfest um, weekend to extend that out for folks. Uh, and then kind of exciting for us, we're going to be doing a Christmas Eve concert, a big band Christmas Eve uh, with Frank Sinatra 11 piece band. And then on Christmas Day, Peter Mayer, uh, who was, who still is for the last 30 years, the lead guitarist for Jimmy Buffett's Coral Reefers band. He has a national tour that he does called Stars and Promises. This is his 30th year, and they will be doing a Christmas Eve, a Christmas Day concert that night at Las Olas Oceanside Park, completely free to the public. Uh, that's the beauty of it too. So, you know, as you have guests, and I'm going to be dropping off um, flyers, and we send emails out. I know when I speak with folks and that are coming in for some of my other clients and let them know everything else that's going on in the area, they get really excited. And you know, it, it just gives them another way to experience the area besides what they've come here for originally. Thank you. Um, so sorry I was late today. Uh, so for retail in general, I think we, you know, we're anticipating um, a really good, um, strong holiday based on especially based on everything we're hearing from the hotel uh, the hotels uh, Tortuga obviously in Bocho is always really good for us um, so we, we we've definitely started to see an increase in the traffic at the Galleria over the last couple of months um, following the decline during the variant period 
I will say, I know we all love the great weather, but the rain definitely helps. We've had a lot of rain lately, <laughs> so that's definitely helped uh, traffic. So when they're not on the beach, they're, they're definitely coming to shop. Um, as far as events at the mall, you know, I will say people are clamoring for events. We've had a lot of events lately and with really good turnout, our Men of Style event, which is in about a week and a half, sold out in 20 minutes, 800 tickets. So it's, they're coming back. Um, I think labor is from a labor standpoint, the restaurants, um, they're, they're staffed, um, but you know, they're just staffed. So if somebody, you know, calls in sick or a couple people, then, then it really puts them in a bind. But, um, overall, you know, for, I've talked to a couple of our restaurants, Thanksgiving day and things like that. People are eating out. I, I, I don't know what else. It's just unbelievable. They're way over 2019 numbers. And um, as far as the supply chain, you know, it definitely, um, it's, it has an impact on retail in general, whether it's at the mall or just, I don't know if you've been to a car dealership. I mean, you just, there's a lot of supply that's just not there. So um, I don't think it'll have a, a major impact necessarily on our type of retail. I, you know, the stores seem to have a pretty decent supply, um, but I think for overall retail, you know, we'll definitely um, feel the effects uh, from a, a, a global retail standpoint. So I think that's all I have right now. Thanks. Hi everyone, um, I'm Keith with the Greater Fort Lauderdale LGBT Chamber of Commerce and we also operate a visitor center. Um, we're getting ready to publish our 10th annual LGBT plus travel guide. And I was, um, when Ina was talking, I can, we're having the same situation with the supplies. Uh, we actually had to pay last week and commit to a certain number of pages and, and basically pay for the paper because there's a shortage. And um, I never realized that it hit that level, but um, we're looking at about 35% more printing costs. Um, we still have a few pages left to sell, and we're, we're keeping them. We've locked the prices in the last few years the same just to try to, to do the best we can. We publish it in-house. so. If anyone's interested in uh, participating in that, please let me know. I'll be sending this week out like a final notice. Normally we're selling through December, but um, because of this, we had to commit to a certain number of pages. It's, it's, it's out there. And um, everything is, um, the sales are ahead of much, obviously last year was, was a little low, but we still published. Um, but I would say the, the um, interest in it exceeded the, the 2019 um, edition that we did so we're, we're doing well with that and there is a demand and and our visitor center is seeing more and more people coming in and um, if anyone that we would like to know about some of these events um, so if, if I could get those we can help promote them for you okay thank you If it's not working, they said to check the cable, it may be loose. Oh, there it is. Uh, good morning, Bob Kiesler, Gallery One, Double Tree Suites by Hilton. Um, supply chain, um, you know, because there is no logic. Uh, the, we ordered 10 ounce paper cups and 10 ounce lids and got 10 ounce lids and nine ounce paper cups. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost to the point where now, I know what you ordered, but this is what we got. So if anybody needs any 10 ounce lids, I've got plenty of them. Um, great uh, boat show, great Tortuga, uh, well exceeding uh, numbers. What we haven't seen yet are what I will call long-term international uh, coming back. Uh, we've seen s uh, spots here and there. Uh, short term, three, four, five nights, uh, our hotel being all sweet, uh, we normally have a good uh, supply of Canadians who will come down for 60, some 90 days. And that we have not seen return uh, at this point in time, uh, that. Uh, staffing continues to be a major, major concern, uh, especially culinary uh, staffing. That uh, is actually inhibiting us in booking uh, because of our uncertainty of staffing levels. Uh, we're actually having to turn away some catering business uh, because we don't 
or are not sure that we've got the staff to, uh, to, to, to actually meet that commitment. So uh, Q1 pace uh, right now is looking, looking good. Uh, group, smaller group than normal, probably 50%, but we're beginning to see life in Q2 from corporate group. So that's kind of our recap. That's great. Feel free to send them our way, Bob, if you, you can't have staff from turn them away. You know, you know <laughs> I'm happy to, Tim, but, uh, you know, don't get mad at me when I'm handing out my business card yeah. at your restaurant. <laughs> yeah. no. uh, to echo what Tim said, I really think that the, the early marketing steps that the committee has put together has been really fantastic. Uh, we're really thrilled, uh, particularly with the, the luxury section. Um, we've... We've had some previews, um, having our friends with the Four Seasons be our residents for the last two years. Um, we've been able to see some of the changes that are occurring uh, in that very metro market of beach, um, where we're not really group driven as a small community, um, but it does impact. We have seen uh, the demand for group come back. I agree that we have not seen any slippage um, since, say, October. That summer, we did see that activity. If anything would change, in, um, we saw that from the business that uh, canceled, uh, those that were over 100 room nights or more or had international uh, did cancel fully. Those that were probably under 100 room night peak without international just moved. Um, and then that business that we did still keep capture that had international, if they didn't uh, cancel, they moved to 23. Um, in terms of the international, we are seeing uh, the UK. Um, predominantly, we don't see Canadians yet, um, but uh, we're very encouraged to see some of the uh, things that are happening from the airline standpoint. We have a new airline that's uh, uh, headquartered now in Fort Lauderdale, uh, Oslo Airline, what is it, the uh, Norris Atlantic Airways. It's going to be operating out of the executive airport. Um, we also had uh, another company uh, move into as headquarters from Indiana, the uh, American uh, Queen Voyagers. These are all great uh, moves to the city. And I'm going to take a somewhat a different approach, not so much uh, turning the group business into our transient, but um, I think there's a great advantage of taking our transient business and turning it into some of the groups and maybe even uh, uh, encouraging people to invest into the community. Um, we've seen that in really small ways uh, and we're very encouraged. Um, I'm also part of the planning uh, for the Sea Glass event that's going to be in the third week of uh, January. Uh, we're co-sponsoring co with uh, Mercedes-Benz, uh, Auto Nation. There's some uh, charity uh, uh, proceeds going to Drive Pink. Uh, we've invited 40 vineyards somewhere in the world to come and uh, showcase their rosés. Uh, it's, it's a nice upscale uh, food and uh, beverage event that's really tipped not for the masses but for uh, a little more showcase uh, into the beaches. Um, and, and then elevating that beach experience, we're working with the city manager, um, the Bruget brothers, and trying to uh, take that little niche of beach between the Conrad, the Four Seasons, us, and the W, and somewhat showcasing a, a better experience of beaches uh, that you can maybe get some elsewhere in Florida, but not yet uh, to the public. Um, and so we're trying to uh, make some uh, agreements made so that by the first of the year, we can kind of elevate that experience along uh, uh, North Beach uh, Boulevard. Uh, other than that, it's great to be here. Um, we are, we see demand for January and February completely off the chart from 2019. Um, I think that demand's gonna spill into March uh, as people find out that people are sold out and they're gonna move dates into April, May, June. Um, I do see that we're gonna have probably our best year in our 15 year history coming into 22. Hi everybody, Elaine Fitzgerald here. Um, uh, as far as small inns in, in the county go, I, I really think that um, 
they came out in large part ahead of the game, um, not being reliant on large groups. Um, my company with my five properties have been largely sold out most of the year, and we are largely sold out for season. So we won't even know or see any possible European business because we're blocked. Um, so I just don't know. Uh, we have seen uh, a rush of Canadians uh, we also had Canadians that kept re-upping their stays uh, until they were unlocked from their country and ours. Um, uh, on the supply chain, I think I've ordered more toilet paper than I've ever ordered before and warehoused it. My people will never run out of toilet paper. Um, the, the small inns also, uh, similar to some of the restaurants, um, there's there have been a lot of change of hands this past year, a lot. Um, I think there needs to be, uh, we, we saw just a huge influx, primarily from New York and California, of people who were bailing from those states and investing here. Um, and many of them have never operated small properties. They just want to play hotelier. Um, I think there needs to be some outreach um, and education to those properties. Um, uh, I've highly encouraged membership in Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association, getting in touch with the CVB, you know, getting partners so that they have help and know what they're doing. Um, uh, in, uh, in Pompano Beach, we're excited about a couple of things. We have almost completed the roof on the AMP, uh, which is very exciting, so people aren't going to get rained out in all those concerts. Um, and um, Shipwreck Park and the city of Pompano Beach are really excited. A project that's been going on for five years now is coming very close to fruition. Uh, Wahoo Bay um, at Hillsboro Inlet. Um, this is going to be uh, three goals, scientific research, um, environmental education, and tourism. Um, basically an underwater snorkel park um, with um, uh, uh, land kiosks for education, but um, the idea is going to be to um, have a venue for school kids or tourists to see many, many scientific projects underway, underwater, um, and actually maybe even have classroom time, uh, spread the word about, about what we're doing and, and the importance of, of ocean environmental protection to classrooms all over the country via internet. Um, and again, just you know, really highlighting what we have in, in this area. Um, as far as timeline, um, by now, um, Shipwreck Park has gotten all the permits it needs, all the real tough ones, and it's only waiting for the state of Florida permit. Once that comes in, um, University of Miami, a partner with us, is going to be fabricating um, something very revolutionary. It's their um, sea hive component. It, it's concrete with holes in it, and it's designed a certain way. And uh, they're going to do some of the very first studies on wave action and erosion. And uh, these sea hives are going to be installed all along the edge of the in inlet. Uh, mangroves can grow on top. It can protect sea life and protect shorelines. Uh, so that'll be pretty exciting. And that can be fabricated within about 90 days of getting that Florida permit. So there we go. Thank you. Uh, hi, Meredith McCleary. Um, I'm a, an independent travel consultant. Um, I deal primarily with, uh, I guess, outgoing travel, but it gives me insight into the international perspective. And a lot of the things that I've heard mentioned here as far as um, people from other countries uh, being able to come to Fort Lauderdale or to the U.S has been because of some of the restrictions that the U.S. have had upon uh, protocols for entry. With that now opening up, uh, I think it's going to be great. During the pandemic, I did take the opportunity to do some international travel to experience uh, what the protocol calls are. And uh, those of you who have traveled know that they can be um, quite nerve-wracking especially if you have to go through various ports. Uh, however, they are good and they are for our safety and um, I think we're doing a good job and Fort Lauderdale is gonna be great. 
we do have people who come in uh, from the travel perspective that are taking cruises. And uh, I hats off to the young lady over there from Carnival for hanging tough uh, when we needed people to travel. And it was difficult to work through some of the protocols. But uh, persistence has paid off. And people are traveling like 500. Uh, I thank you for addressing the luxury market because for 20 years I worked primarily in the luxury market. And those are the guys who uh, will travel regardless. And they are looking for unique experiences. So I see that we are doing some unique things that I've heard around the table here this morning here in Fort Lauderdale. And I'm really happy of that. And that the restaurant business is opening back up because I love all of Tim's places. <laughs> uh, as you can tell, I eat out a lot. Um, but I had more of a question uh, when it comes to the availability of supply and labor. Being the, for in my old life, uh, the director of vocational training for Broward County, we had always provided training in culinary, uh, home care, um, not home care, hospitality industry. And I was wondering if if that type of, I've been out 20 years, so that tells you a lot. If that kind of uh, connection still exists, where when your supply is running very low, that the training centers pitch in and train uh, mass people to fill those vacancies. Uh, I know there are all kind of reasons being given as to why people aren't working some being the stimulus check, and there is some truth to some of that also. But with that kind of agreement, everybody should be working in Fort Lauderdale. Heaven knows there are a lot of people who need to be working. And for those who need cooks, uh, who need housekeepers and etc., this is an opportune time for education and the industry to work back together and working 25, almost 30 years uh, with business and industry here in Broward, it can happen. So I'm just wondering if that connection is going on. And I know marketing may not have anything to do with it, but would you please, if we could just follow up on that, I'll follow up from the educational side to see what are they doing to outreach to you and place people in training or get people in training. Um, back to my travel part, uh, a number of my clients are traveling like 500 internationally and what they are looking for is where can I go and make the minimum number of stops so I don't have to do so many protocols. Uh, so based upon that, we've looked at a lot of staycations, people just staying right here in Fort Lauderdale or the surrounding areas of Florida, and there are a lot of fun and interesting things that are going on. And, and Ina, thank you for Travel Host because for once I'm reading it more than anything else of things to do and look at. Um, but people are staying at some of the local hotels and boutique hotels and Elaine and I had a discussion this morning about Airbnbs and et cetera. That's another story. But I'm excited about travel really coming back. There are a lot of things I think can be done to enhance it. And I am, uh, as my pastor used to say, deliciously proud to see some of the changes that have occurred here over the past several years. Uh, you guys in the big international hotels like Marriott don't have to worry much, but uh, there's enough for everybody. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. I pretty much gave my report out earlier, but just one thing to add uh, from a travel agency standpoint, we're seeing more and more travel agencies reaching out and booking business into the hotels. And I read a couple of articles that more and more people are using travel agents uh, and not doing their own thing because why do that when you can get somebody that is an expert at it? And we're seeing a lot of consortia business and um, We've got our own consortia program with Marriott called Luminous and the luxury one called Stars, but we're seeing a lot more of this business, so um, which is encouraging. We, we welcome that, uh, have another sales team out there working for all of us, so it's all good. Thank you. 
Good morning, every, everyone. Ron Drew, Executive Vice President of the Greater Fort Lauderdale Alliance, the Economic Development Group of Broward. Um, I can tell you that things are very strong on the business side, on the economic development side. We had probably one of our very best years ever in this past year during a pandemic in terms of number of jobs that came to, to uh, Fort Lauderdale and, and Greater Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood and other places, and uh, the capital investment that came as well. So that's really good news uh, from our standpoint. One of the things that we're working to address, we've always advertised to corporate decision makers, those who were deciding where companies were going to go, and, uh, and, and the real estate uh, executives in, in the large corporations. And we are changing that. We've been moving in this direction, but we're changing it this year. Half of our funds are going to go to advertising to companies and half of our funds are going to go to advertising to talent because it's such a big issue. And if you, if you don't have the talent, the companies are not coming regardless of how much you w reach out to them. So that, uh, that talent campaign is really tying in well with, with what Visit Lauderdale is about. And our, and our tagline is called Live Where You Vacation. And we started it when we had uh, spring break about three years ago. We started that when spring breakers were here of doing some radio ads to them. It was surprising to us. In three days, we got 3,000 clicks to our website from that little radio campaign of spring breakers who were here. But this past year, we did campaigns on LinkedIn and, and uh, Facebook. In March, we had 20,000 clicks to our website from that talent, that talent advertising. And in June, we partnered with Enterprise Florida, and we had 60,000 clicks to our website from that campaign. And that's, we get about 300,000 visits to our website a year. So that's a big, that's a big number to see in one month coming from, from the talent. But people are definitely interested in being here. We were the number one with Miami Fort Lauderdale MSA, the number one place in the nation last year that IT workers moved to during the pandemic. So that was a good, good for us because a lot of our technology companies are growing here and are moving here from other places and we need that talent to be here and it's a very interesting because people in other places california are, are hiring people who live here to work at their company because they do it in you know remotely now they don't have to be where they're they're living so that's a challenge for us as well is that we want the people who are living here to be working here as, uh, as well we were also a part of the NBC satellite tour. We appreciated the Visit Lauderdale bringing that uh, opportunity to us, so we bought some advertising there. I feel really good about the reach that was in that uh, special. Uh, we've get on, done a couple of publications. If you'd like to have copies, let me know. The uh, Livability Magazine is the first time we've worked with them. On the front, it says Live Where You Vacation, and a big part of this is about uh, visiting here or living here. And then we also have uh, Welcome Home, which is our campaign for people to move here. And, and we're having a campaign uh, that's in the works that we'll be calling Come Home to the alumni who have gone up, gone off and worked in other places of coming back here and working. And then finally, I'll just mention the Industrial Asset Management Council will be at the Harbor, uh, Marriott Harbor Beach in uh, April, early May. That's a really important group to us they, when they were looking at coming in, it was a partnership with, with FPL and us and our counterparts in Miami and Palm Beach. Obviously, Miami wanted it, Palm Beach wanted it, we wanted it. They chose to come here. They liked the idea of being in the center of the, of the whole region. And these are the folks who decide um, where companies go, where, where they buy, where they invest. It's the, it's the real estate decision makers for the big investment companies. It's the site selectors, it's the company uh, real estate people in large corporations. So it's exactly who we want to get to. And they'll be in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale for about five days at that time of year. So we'll, we'll pull out all the stops with our partners and, and make that a really successful opportunity for us. Thank, Thank you, you Tim. All right, Jim. Jim Pankello, Logamar Resort. Um, like all the hoteliers, we're doing very well since March, to your point. Uh, we've set records every month as far as occupancy goes. Uh, Tortuga, like everybody along the beach here, and Boat Show, excellent uh, occupancy and participation. Um, groups, we, we're not a big convention or group hotel, but we still depend on them. Um, and what we see is some of the people, the groups that have been coming back over the years, they're maybe 50% or 60% less than what they were in the past. But in 22, we do start seeing more groups 
coming back to the hotel. And Q1, looks like, again, it's going to be a good uh, quarter for us to begin with, but pace is doing very well. Um, foreign, um, Europeans, we're getting a lot of Europeans. Believe it or not, the first day it opened up, we were getting reservations. We were getting people actually coming in that day and uh, from Europe. I was talking to somebody from uh, Germany at the front desk one of the first days that opened up, and they flew in from Lufthansa. Lufthansa flies into uh, from Frankfurt um, to uh, Miami, and they said the flight was full, the plane was full, so they expected you know, more and more Germans, particular, to come into this area, which is a good thing for us, uh, for everybody. Um, labor, again, everybody's struggling for labor, and we're struggling for labor. Um, you know, one thing we talked about, and I heard Bob talk about this a couple times, that I think he closed some rooms because he didn't have enough housekeepers, right? And the same thing with us. All the housekeepers that I know of, not that I know of, but uh, that group of people are mainly older people. And uh, I always say, what's going to happen when the housekeepers start retiring? And who's going to take care of the rooms, which is an important thing. Right now, we have limited uh, housekeeping service as it is because we don't have enough room attendants. And uh, we just ask them to come in there and do their best. If somebody wants full service, we'll give it to them, obviously. But um, what's going to happen to that group of people um, when they start retiring? And we have to start looking at some of the, uh, the, uh, the foreign uh, people from different countries to come in here and help our labor, labor market, which is very important for the hotels around the area, from probably around the country, I would say. That's it for me. Thank you. That work? Okay, yes. Um, good morning or afternoon, not quite yet. Raylan's story with the city of Hollywood, and I'll uh, keep it brief. I think we're sort of seeing in Hollywood the same things that uh, have been mentioned around the table. Um, substantial uh, investment uh, underway in our downtown multifamily is you know huge right now and of course as more and more people move into our downtown we have 1500 residential units uh, underway or uh, planned at this time right in our core downtown and that means more people shopping more people eating out and all of those things that we've talked about and we're seeing uh, reports from our downtown businesses that business is recovering. Events are back. We had a record uh, year at the uh, Hollywood uh, Halloween event in our downtown. We have an art walk uh, this weekend and each month we're seeing um, increased numbers even over our 2019 numbers. We have more uh, events planned in our arts park um, and so we have a full calendar of events that are starting to really um, take hold and and have big turnouts, so I think that everyone's sentiment that people are hungry for events and uh, is very much the case that we're seeing. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, uh, a number of us from the city management team have met with the uh, Margaritaville Resort and the Diplomat uh, Resort. Both of them were reporting uh, that they felt very optimistic about where things were headed. Um, of course, Margaritaville just sold, and we met with the new uh, ownership, the Pebble uh, Brook uh, ownership group. Um, and they have a new general manager at Margaritaville, but still Davidson Hospitality, and who's familiar to a lot of people, so we're happy, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I think that that, you know, kind of sums it up. We're, uh, we have a lot of uh, projects taking place in uh, our downtown right now. We're doing a new streetscape project on uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and then also on the, some of the side streets, we're doing some alley reconstruction work, and we have a tremendous um, general obligation bond series of projects that are improving golf courses and parks throughout the city. So all of those are underway um, in various uh, stages. Well, speaking of Margaritaville, Mike, do you want to give an update of, of, uh, of Margaritaville? Okay. Yeah. Which one's on? Okay. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm exhausted, right? We had uh, the boat show of events and then went into a car and exotics on Las Olas for that day and then going into Tortuga for day. I mean, so, wow, incredible for all of us to do it because it's a lot of work and a lot of energy for all of us. Um, Hollywood, as you said, it, it very activated. Halloween, was uh, that was all incredible, all the re reports that we're hearing. Uh, let me go back on some of the points that I made. Cancels. We're experiencing our last cancel this week, meaning we took it back in late July, August, but this is our last one. So anything beyond here stayed on the books for us um, for the remainder of time. So we'll get through this one and we'll be done. Um, when you look at uh, January, very strong. 
uh, February, March. Transient's very strong. Uh, about 55% of the bookings that are in January and February were rebooked from the year before. So the good news about um, with us, we had an 80% rebooking percentage. So everything from all COVID, we were able to replace 80% of all the booking room nights. Uh, so that was a big win for us. Um, supplies, obviously a, a big issue, you know, and we're dealing with brand, what we can change, what we can't change. It's constant conversations, um, even on an engineering perspective, when something breaks down, a, you know, a major refrigerator breaks down, you're trying to get a supply, a, a part for it. You're trying to pivot and figure a new way to get this done. So um, we're dealing with that. International, um, we're not a big international brand at the moment. We still haven't been. We really relate to our domestic <clears throat> customers with Margaritaville. Some people not sure who Jimmy Buffett is over in Europe still, unfortunately, but we will get there over time. Canada, obviously, we do well with, but on uh, across the pond is a little bit different. Um, and then labor. The good news about labor is the difference between two months from now and what we're seeing now is people show up for interviews. Mm, yeah. They're actually coming, you know, so, you know, you set up four interviews and no one would show the whole day. Um, but, and that's more on the F&B side from what I hear. And then uh, and front desk and things like that. We're now the four are showing and, uh, you know, we're starting to find nice candidates. Um, but also, too, and, and what we're trying to do, and I hope you guys are, too, when you find that candidate, it may not be for that job that they're looking for. But we've got to capture them to see what else. Right. What else may be in the hotel that, that would be the perfect fit for them and maneuver them in that way. So um, I think that's my update. Any questions on us? No, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe we have uh, some people on the phone that want to give an update. Mac McNeil from the Broward Center. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thanks, everybody, for uh, allowing me to, to do this by phone and watching you all on TV today. Uh, just to give you a quick update on the Broward Center and everything we have gone, uh, going on over there, uh, I'll talk a little bit about staffing, recruiting, and some of the supply chain issues that I hear everyone else talking about, and, and they do uh, even affect us um, in a little bit different ways. But um, over the last couple of years due to COVID, we unfortunately lost about 50% of our staff uh, and are still recruiting and rehiring. It hasn't been uh, as challenging, I believe, as some of your industries. Um, but we are getting new team members that just need a lot of investment and training. So there's not a lot of, of staffing coming from other sectors in the entertainment industry. I think COVID scared a lot of them away and out of the business. Uh, so our, our kind of our recruiting and, and, and hiring is, is more in um, uh, new people and, and spending time in training. Uh, our supply chain issues that uh, we are nearly uh, overcoming, I believe, it's really about the artist touring industry and who wants to tour, who wants to be out on the road. Um, and I have never spent so much time in my life um, rebooking and rescheduling shows uh, because a lot of the touring industry, they, they wanted to remain busy and remain on the road, uh, and it was just about finding a new place for them. So we had to move all those shows at the same time, try to book new shows. So from a supply chain point of view, it was without a doubt, I think, one of the most challenging things in the business. Um, and the good thing is, is we overall did not see uh, a large amount of refunds from uh, ticket holders during that time frame. They really held on to their seats, uh, you know, waiting for their favorite show, their favorite Broadway title, um, or subscription to come back. So that remained strong for us as well. Um, the tough part was 1819, and uh, the years 1819 were the most successful uh, in the 30 year history at the Broward Center. And 1920 was pacing to be the same. So when March 13th, uh, 2020 hit, and we had to send everybody from Mean Girls back to New York, uh, it was really, you know, it was tough like it was for everybody. Um, but we spent that time kind of changing the way we do business a little bit, operated at a little bit of a different scale, returned to 100% capacity events just this past summer. So since then, um, I'll say business has been strong. Um, we reopened the Parker after its $30 million renovation. It reopened in yeah. September, uh, and the Parker is looking to have really its, its largest um, calendar year ever because um, of the size of the Parker and the acts that, that play well in there are among the artists in the industry that want to be out on the road right now and uh, as soon as they possibly can. So that's good news for downtown and for us. 
Uh, Broadway in Fort Lauderdale, our Broadway season resumed um, on November 3rd with Come From Away. Uh, we had two weeks, 16 performances there, and the whole the whole run actually exceeded our sales projections. Now, we went in without the biggest sales projections ever, but we did go in conservative, and we did exceed those sales projections, which, you know, makes everybody feel good. The only piece of anxiety over that is that 42% of our ticket, our single tickets sold for that uh, two-week Broadway run was actually sold during the two-week run. So the anxiety of going into, you know, uh, that scale of an event um, with a lower advance sale was definitely a nail-biter in the type of things we don't like seeing in our live business. Um, but at the end of the day, it worked out, and we're glad to exceed there. And again, from a consumer point of view, we saw practically no refunds. So people, again, want to come out and want to be in the live space, um, and they're okay coming indoors to a theater. Uh, The prom is next, and then in March we have Disney's Frozen, uh, kind of taking over the Broward Center. Overall, concerts and comedians are doing exceptionally well. I think people are ready to laugh a lot right now and and glad to be out. Um, The the feedback we get from customers is that they're just thankful to be in person uh, and sharing their experiences with their friends uh, at a live show. Um, and we are currently you know, in a, in a phase now where we are employing guest entry policies. Uh, it's going over, um, there's an understanding, it's going over well. People are ready to see some relaxation in those, and, and we plan on doing that relatively soon. But as we get close to Q1, which is traditionally the three busiest months of our entire year. Um, I can tell you through, you know, early April, um, we only have a couple days off. So our, the, the artists are out there, the shows are booked, and we're looking for a, an incredibly strong Q1. Well, great. That's a great update. And, and thank you, everyone, for their updates. I guess uh, I, the good news is 18 months ago we had all the supplies we needed and, no, and all the staff we needed and no sales. Now we have all the sales we want, but no staff and supplies. So I'd rather much better be in this position than, than 18 months ago. So, again, uh, it's 11:30, so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, thank you, everyone, for being here. This insight is awesome for our our uh, team to hear. Thank you. <laughs>